First of all, we're going to start with what you like doing, something that you enjoy. This is not the same as your passion. You hear the word passion used a lot in business. Um, a lot of this is due to Steve Jobs. He gave a commencement uh, speech or a graduation speech at, I believe it was Stanford, um, where he talked about following your passion and great work only occurs if you are following your passion. And this is a massively shared uh, YouTube video. This has um, been referenced in thousands of books and articles, and it's generally the rally rallying cry for a generation during the 90s and the early 2000s to follow your passion and then everything else would fall into place. However, this isn't the full story. There are um, downfalls to following your passion. For one, you might not be very good at whatever your passion is. And for two, um, you might be following a passion that brings you a lot of joy. You might even be good at it, but there's no market there. There's no way for you to take your skills out to the wider world and give value to the wider world, which is basically what a market is. Um, we take our value out there and we are recompensed um, either through payment or through other services for what we bring to the world. Um, and your passion may not um, bring much value to other people. In fact, Steve Jobs actually recanted um, later on in his life while talking to Walter Isaacson, his uh, biographer, uh, Steve Jobs said, and I'm going to quote here, yeah, we're always talking about following your passion, but we're all part of the flow of history. You've got to put something back into the flow of history that's going to help your community, help other people. In 20, 30, 40 years, you want people to think he didn't just have a passion, he actually cared about making something people needed, something that people wanted. So later on in Steve Jobs' life, he did kind of turn away from this idea of a passion-driven enterprise, a passion-driven project. And he did recognize that it's not enough to have a personal passion and to follow that, but you need a passion that, um, that coincides with what other people are interested in, that coincides with the community. And this is what we're talking about when we're talking about the market. It needs to be something that you can put out there and other people are pleased to receive it. They're happy to pay you for it. They're happy to uh, follow you. They're happy to follow your advice and your authority because you are providing value to the community. You're providing value to the, the flow of history, as Job puts it, which is a, a much more highfalutin way to think about it. So this has actually been backed up. Um, Yale Singapore um, did some studies and they found that uh, following your passion was actually detrimental in a lot of um a lot of cases um, in terms of business, starting up businesses and uh, job acquisition, because for one, a lot of people didn't know uh, what their passion actually was, and they believed that they should have an idea of what that passion was, and that was quite uh, depressing. It made people think there's something wrong with them. And even if they did have a passion, which was a, a small minority, this tend to lead, lead to a fixed mindset where only one outcome was was um, acceptable and this led people down a very uh, straight path where they weren't very flexible and their careers and their lives suffered as a result of this because they couldn't um, they couldn't envisage bringing other external elements um, from other people other other interests into their life instead they were too fixed on one point and that may or may or not have been the point of greater success for them depending on what the wider world um, uh, what the wider world valued at that time. So passion actually comes from mastery rather than the other way around. They do interlock. Um, we tend to do a lot of the things that we're good at because we enjoy doing them. And because we enjoy doing them and do them a lot, we get better at doing them. This is why you see some kids in a school, for example, the sporty kids tend to get sportier because the non-sporty kids don't enjoy playing sports, therefore do not play sports and do not increase their skill level, whereas the sporty kids get sportier. So just having that head start early on is enough to um, to build up um, this cascading flow of uh, cause and effect and then you get better at doing what it is you have uh, dedicated your time to. And as a result, you also start to enjoy it more and it might even become a passion, so to speak. So. Um, Mihail Csepszentmihalyi, the Hungarian um, 
psychologist and a neuroscientist he has talked about this um talked about the idea of flow flow is you might have experienced this last time you got so engaged in a task you lost track of time you might have started writing or started on a task and you looked up and suddenly a couple of hours have passed by you were in that task so much that you lose track of time um you could potentially do that uh for the rest of your life you it's something that you enjoy doing so much there's the right balance of challenge there's the right balance of um difficulty and ease so that you can feel like you're achieving something but it's not too easy not too easy not too hard is very important when we enter this state of flow um, this is how we can approach mastery by um, being able to put ourselves into that um, into that area where we're able to just perform to the peak of our abilities and by doing this we become better at entering flow which allows us to increase our mastery of a particular subject and this is what leads to us enjoying it um, so whether it's artificially induced by gambling for example can lead to flow or computer games uh, or through um, sometimes exercise we start to want to do more and more and more of it um, because we enjoy getting into that peak state of flow so much um, and this can lead to a passion but it's a passion that comes through mastery rather than the other way around so as a practical exercise now I want you to stop the videos and go and sit down with a pen and paper maybe a cup of coffee or tea and write down what are the things in life that you most enjoy doing I'm not asking for your one passion most people don't know it if you do great but try not to allow that to derail you from all the other things you enjoy the smaller pleasures in life so sit down and write down all the things in life and and in work that you enjoy doing um, what are the peak experiences that you've had in the past for me personally one that comes to mind immediately is uh, I was in Nepal and I fasted for a couple of days I was staying in a, a retreat and then after three days of fasting I hiked up a, a hill a uh, mountain because I had this massive flow of um, I suppose adrenaline and energy and at the top I was able to look over the Himalayas um, and just I just sat there for a few hours I think before coming back down the mountain that is a peak experience which um, sticks in mind so think about in your life these kind of experiences what were you doing who are you with um, what kind of environment was it these are kind of hints um, that are going to help you towards what you most enjoy and what you most um, like doing in life put it all in for now we're not thinking about our business necessarily we're thinking about holistically the whole of our lives and our work um, also think of any activities you've done that you've lost sense of time this is your flow state um, think of the last time you looked up and you realized oh it's dark outside that is a very good indicator of something you enjoy doing so much that you would be happy to continue doing that um, in the business setting or any other setting for a sustainable period of time so take some time now take an afternoon as long as you can really um, or you could do this over a period of time and just jot down every time you uh, you remember something that you really enjoy doing and it can be super small it could be tidying up your child's Lego for example uh, it could be anything at all but right now we just want to get these experiences down um, so that we can use them along with the next couple of videos to start to hone in on the intersection between what you like doing what you're good at doing and what there's a market for okay so you go ahead and do that now please do this don't just skip to the next video um, because it is going to be important moving on through this section on choosing our niche <laughs>